Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jalen Mitchell, also known as Natural Rain. If you are new here, do not forget to subscribe down below. It's the red button, rectangle, little rectangle, it's red. Click on that and then become a part of Rain Gang. So today, what I'm going to be talking about is <clears throat> training your curls for wash and go. Something that I've been doing since five ever and it works. It works once you figure out that technique so i'm basically just going to be breaking it down giving you guys some steps so that you can get better wash and go results and you know in the spirit of being extra like i always am i got notes a whole lot of notes but it's gonna help me stay on track because i can be everywhere all right so tip number one is to develop a routine and let me tell you why so usually when you make up or like the first time you try wash and go your technique is most likely trash. And then so you get this idea that, hey, I don't have wash and go hair. And I really don't think that's the case because even when I tried to do my wash and go for the first time, I was like, um, this isn't for me. It's canceled. I'm gonna be a twist out girl, a bantu not out girl, or anything else but a wash and go girl. But the thing was my technique wasn't what my hair needed. I didn't know how to listen to my hair or anything like that. So I just assumed that wash and goes weren't for me so first get that out of your mind get something into your mind that hey i can make this happen wash and goes are for me i just need to figure out a technique and so the way you figure out your technique is trial and error or at least the way that i figured out my technique was trial and error i would look on youtube and try to find different methods to do wash and goes so let's name a couple so some of them some people shingle their hair some people do the praying hands method i actually do the praying hands method um some people use the plopping method to help their hair dry like the, some people use a fan to help their hair dry some people diffuse all of these things like all the little steps that go into your wash and go can make or break the results of your wash and go. So you need to make sure you have an idea of all the steps that you wanna take. And don't just try the first one and be like, oh, you know what, maybe wash and goes are for me. No, try them until you find something that you genuinely like and that genuinely works for your hair. So if you're feeling discouraged, let's just say this. Me and my roommates do different things for our hair. If my roommate tried her technique on me, I would most likely look a mess. Like it's not going to look the same. Do I then think, oh my gosh, I just can't do wash and goes? No, because I know that my hair can in fact wash and go, but I had to find out what my hair likes and what works for my hair. If that makes any sense at all. I feel like it did, but you know what I'm saying? I, I feel like it did. Let me know. Did it make sense? I feel it makes sense. Now I can't speak for everybody, but one vital thing for me getting my wash and go to turn out how I like it was making sure that I was using enough water. If you're not using enough water, at least for me, can't speak for everybody, but I have heard like this is the case for a lot of people, then your hair can tend to be more frizzy. And just a little hint here, there's a such thing as not enough water for your wash and go but there's no such thing as too much so when you feel like you have enough water just add a little more because it can't hurt but if you don't have enough water at all then that can actually hurt your wash and go so better to have too much than not enough is basically what i'm saying when it comes to wash and goes saturate your hair sis saturate it so a number two this is how i used my technique to train my curls first i gave myself a routine that routine came from number one. That meant trial and error, finding what works for me, finding the products I like, finding what order I need to put those products in, finding out how much water I need, all of that. Once I figured out that technique, I used it, made it into a routine. So I'm constantly doing that. My curls are constantly being put under that technique. It's not just one time. You teach your hair how to act. So some people, they like to do bantu knots all the time. They do bantu knots all the time and their hair always turns out great because they have a really good technique and then they continue to do it and their hair just knows what to do. That's what you wanna create for your wash and go. So for an example, I start by washing my hair once a week and then following up with deep conditioning. That was what I used to do. Now I wash my hair twice a week it all depends on what your hair can take, but what I will say is my hair gets used to however I treat it. So if I want to do my hair once a week, my hair will get used to being washed once a week. If I want to do my hair twice a week, my hair will get used to being washed twice a week. If I then want to change my routine from there, it's a process. 
So I have to readjust to washing my hair just once a week or readjust to washing my hair twice a week. Okay, so we're not halfway doing anything. We go all in. So if you're trying to do wash and goes and you're really serious about getting that perfect wash and go, make it your business to continue to do wash and goes over and over and over again. Repetition leads you as close to perfection as you can possibly get. Repetition will show you what your hair likes, what it doesn't like. It will let you learn your hair in that state, which would be a wash and go. So repeat it, repeat it. If that doesn't work, try something new, try something new. And when you finally find what does work, repeat that over and over again and your hair will get used to it. You will get used to it and your hair will respond accordingly. Once you know the products, the technique, how much water to put in your hair, and then you continue to do it, your hair is going to be like, okay, this is what we're doing. I already know the game plan. Go ahead. Hit me with it, sis. Okay. So also like repetition allowed me to see what my hair liked and what it didn't like as far as products and technique. If I was doing it over and over again, I got to see, hey, my hair responds really well when I put this much water in it. My hair responds really well when I put these two products together for a combo. So it's just the little things that maybe people overlook that make all of the difference when it comes to getting those pop and curls that you're looking for. Also, I do want to mention, do not have unrealistic expectations. If you're watching someone on YouTube and you want your hair to come out exactly like that YouTuber, chances are it's not going to happen unless you guys have similar curl patterns and similar density. And even then, sometimes it's hard because no curl pattern is exactly the same. No density is exactly the same. So try to get your best wash and go not that person's best wash and go not that youtuber's best wash and go but your best wash and go so don't compare your hair and how it's looking to other people only compare it to your end goal what are you looking to get from this wash and go how popping can your curls be oh the other thing is you only have to achieve a bomb wash and go one time and then you repeat you just let me run that back. You only have to achieve a pop and wash and go one time and then you repeat. Then you know the water, the amount of water you use, use that. You know your products that you use, those are golden. Um, and then you can start venturing out and trying different things, but you need to find what actually works. Go through the process of finding what works. When you find what works, use that. That's holy grail right there. So now I'm going to go through a list of questions that you should be asking yourself if you haven't quite figured out how to listen to your hair. So one of them is, does my hair like these products? So does, is my hair responding well to these products in combination? So does your hair feel dry when you're applying the products? Does your hair still not feel moisturized even after you've applied all of the products? If that is the case, the products are not moisturizing enough and you need to find new products that work well for your hair. Also ask yourself, how can I reduce frizz? So one thing for me is I do not touch my hair when it is wet and it is styled in that curly state. I wait until it is completely dry. This really helps me to reduce frizz. I'm not manipulating my hair once it is styled. When I'm styling, I'm good to go touch, play all in it, comb it out, do whatever. But when it is styled, when it is exactly how you want it to look and exactly how you want it to dry, do not touch it. Another way is you can apply your products in smaller sections. A lot of people are tackling too much hair at one time. Especially if you're new at this, take that smaller section. It's going to take more time, but when you're new, you might need that extra time to put on more product and detangle your hair. When you get used to it, you can start taking bigger sections. But right now, take smaller sections. Use gel. Okay, or custard. Um, I like gels and custards, but before I didn't used to use any of that. And I will say that using gels and or custards really helps to reduce how much frizz you have. Oh, and then ask yourself, is my hair healthy? So a lot of people are doing their wash and goes and they're expecting these great results, but their hair is not healthy, which means if you're transitioning, you're gonna have different results. If you need to clip your ends really bad, you're gonna have different results. You may end up with frizz just because you need to clip your ends. Um, if you have color damage of some sort, it's going to affect your results. So take everything into account before you say, my hair can't do that. Maybe your hair at its current state can't do that and maybe your healthiest hair can make a wash and go shake, if that makes sense. 
I say if that makes sense so much. I hope I'll be making sense to y'all. So now I'm going to give you guys a sample routine. This is my current routine actually, but it's just a sample. It's something to go off of. If you were looking to try a routine for the first time, I am more than happy to help you. You can try mine, but also don't be afraid to try other people's. Um, don't be afraid to try other people's routines who have similar hair types, textures, density, um, porosity as you try that but I just want to give you guys a sample so that if you wanted to try to start that wash and go routine you'll have a base and then don't be afraid to say no I don't want to do that try it but don't be afraid to say okay that part of her routine doesn't really work for me I'm gonna switch it to this like I said it's all about trial and error but I do want to give you like a base to start out with if you are completely lost so I wrote it down because I'm not going to remember everything that I do, but I am, I do do pretty well with sticking to this routine. So here we go. So I wash my hair twice a week. So one time out of that week, I'm going to shampoo my hair. And then the other time out of that same week, I will just co-wash. I don't like to use too much shampoo. I used to just shampoo once a week as well when I only washed my hair once a week and that is completely fine. But I find that shampooing my hair twice a week is just too much. My hair doesn't need all of that. No. And then I deep condition once a week as well. So I'm even though I'm washing my hair twice a week, one time out of that week I will shampoo, one time out of that week I will co-wash, and one time out of that week I will deep condition. And then I will rinse the deep conditioner out. I will apply my leave-in. The leave-in for me, it's not the same leave-in every time. I just use a very moisturizing leave-in, but it switches all the time because I'm constantly trying new products for you guys. So that's just what I do. But if you have a certain leave-in that really works for you, you can stick to it. Or you have a certain combo that really works for you, you can stick to it. But I rinse my deep conditioner out. I apply a leave-in with lots of water. I mean soaking wet. I mean dripping. And then I apply a custard or gel on top. And I let it sit. I don't touch it. I don't manipulate it until it's dry. So my next step, in order for my hair to dry, I sit under the dryer. If you don't have a dryer, you can use a blow dryer with a diffuser attachment and do it that way. If you do have a dryer, just sit under the dryer. And after that, I stretch my hair, but I do not stretch my hair until it is completely dry. I know a lot of people stretch their hair when it's wet. You can do that, but I do not. I just completely let my hair dry. Then stretch it. The stretching process is much quicker and I don't feel like I'm giving my hair as much frizz when I do it on dry hair. So, and by the way, I stretch my hair with the blow dryer. So I sit under the dryer until my hair is completely dry. Then I will take the blow dryer and stretch only my roots, leaving my ends curly. And then, I mean, basically I just do a wash and go every three days and that pretty much sums it up. So I really hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next video.